be chill, begin. For some, the land begins in the parking lot, a literal zone between street and conservation. Leave your car behind. Ahead, remember your body, made for locomotion. Your feet contain memories of grass and beech nut. Leave your phone behind. Follow the path, well marked with dear hieroglyphics that meander to the summit. Follow your inner compass, like the fledgling cedar wax wings that sing as you climb. Smell the air, crisp with sea and juniper. Rest on a bench, carved with names of others who hiked this trail, paused at this point, breathed this view of blueberries and bay. Inhale, elevation plucks the strings of our senses. At the summit sits a stone lodge to shelter climbers to seal off wind, mist. Stay outside. Sit on a ledge, warmed in the sun for millennia. The land is not ours, but this moment is yours alone. Be chill, promontory. From here, we can see the sea in all her majesty, from the Latin, Magnus, great, strong, powerful. How the language we use to express our sight and delight also binds, confines, confounds and restrains us. Beyond, we see the islands, North Haven, Vinyl Haven, Islesboro, and beyond that, the vast Atlantic, named for Atlas, Greek god, condemned to hold up the sky. The Atlantic, immense salty body of water, body of life, sun freckling her skin with light. Her blueness stretches east to Porto, Portugal, where the Portuguese look west to see Oceano Atlantico. At home, on my desk, an old globe, yard sale globe, circa 1960, mounted at an angle, with lines of currents sweeping like cursive. East of the starred capital of Boston, a notation, limit of pack ice in spring. Trace your finger from Beach Hill, past Porto, through Yugoslavia, the Ukraine, the USSR. Names and landscapes have changed and remained. When we first saw Earth from space, we saw our planet floating in a sea of twilight, humble, vulnerable, venerable. We could not see our tiny house or street or farm, a pixel cell on that lonely globe seemingly lost in space. We could see the earth was mostly sea, as are we, 70% water, with vocal cords and a voice box, neither cord nor box. Uh, we've become untethered from this poem, so let's return to where we started, on Beach Hill, looking out to sea. In the distance, three islands and a ferry crossing her tatted wake, a language we cannot read. Beach Hill, Dawn Land. From Penobscot Bay, the hill rises on the mainland, a verdant swell in May under Sikonomeg, alewife moon. Crimson in July's deep light for Ashite, the ripening moon then snowy white beneath Poonam, frost fish moon. She's a woman, her belly swollen with life as the sun sets behind her silhouette, touched by Esporoset, summer sun. Wabanaki, the people of the dawn land, likely saw this crest as they paddled along the jagged coast. 
the sea at their backs. Perhaps they camped beneath these beech trees for whom the land is now named before they moved west for berries, then north for salmon to the rivers they now rightly claim. Beech trees and this fertile land remain. Beech whose name gave us book, though her thin skin scars easily. Beech trees, her wood carved for drums, higher toned than birch, sister tree with thicker bark and airy crest. Beech trees, slow growing, their canopies create a vast green sky of toothed leaves, breathing for the mother trees that birth them, their fruit feeding the animals that feed them.